You have been listening to Angel Rose and Ahanu on World of Empowerment Radio, your station for practical spirituality in a changing world. Hi, you are very welcome back to our study of the Book of Manifesting by our own Angel Rose. And last week in our session, we covered locating beliefs, resistance and timing. And this week we're going to go into the process of change, how to manifest your desires and when to take action. So let's begin the process of change. In the last chapter, I asked you to answer a few simple but very important questions by writing the answers in your notebook. The reason for this was to show you the resistance you might find in doing it, so you can get a taste of the kinds of information you can uncover when you break through the ego's agenda and be honest with yourself. You may be wondering what to do with all this information now that you've uncovered it. Well, in this chapter, you will go through the process of change with that knowledge and you will see how it can have a huge impact on your life. This is where the journey becomes fun. This is where your power as the creator of your life comes into play. And I'm deliberately using the word play because this part of the writing process is where you actively engage your imagination and your desires. This is where you give yourself permission to change the definition of anything in your life to make it what you really desire. In this process, there are no limits. There is no authority censoring your true desires. It's a simple universal truth that the universe responds to desires, images and emotions. Remember, if you can imagine it, you can manifest it. The difficulty you might have is in giving yourself permission to have free reign to imagine. Most of us have learned to censor our imagination because we were told it wasn't real or that it keeps us from being able to function as an adult in the real world. The truth is, imagination is real. Imagination is one of the most powerful parts of you. It can envision all sorts of new scenarios and make them come into being. Remember, the universe always says yes to whatever you think, believe and desire. It also takes any image in your mind and begins to form a structure around it. This is how the intelligence of life makes the unlimited number of realities and universes. Did you know that you have also created an unlimited number of yous that exist in various other dimensions? Did you know it's possible to meet them and interact with them by a process called quantum jumping? I've done this many times and met some of my other selves who helped me achieve my desires in my 3D reality. However, that's a subject for another time. Now, back to the process of manifesting. Once you've decided what you would like to change, you will write new definitions of situations, feelings, or states of mind. You will reverse the negative or limiting thoughts you have and turn them into something that works for you in a positive way. In your new definition of your reality, you are the one who is deciding what that definition will be. It doesn't matter if Webster's Dictionary agrees with you or not. It doesn't matter if anyone else agrees with you or not. It only matters to your subconscious mind, the part of you that's taking your direction and putting in place your decision for your new reality. Your subconscious mind is the part of you that connects to the deep mind field of the universe. This mind field holds the plasma of creation, the very elements that coalesce into the form of your desire. Your thoughts and consciousness direct the stuff of creation by your will. The truth is, because you declare it, it is. 
You have arrived at a core principle of creation for your success in manifesting a happy and fulfilling life. Here is a very important key to your success in changing your beliefs. You don't have to know how your desires will manifest. The intelligent plasma of the universe will do that for you. Looking into the part of you that believes you have to figure out how something can come into being is a useful exercise in its own right. Here's a way to examine the programs you may have about how something can manifest in your reality. Write out a list of your desires. And this list can be as mundane or as grand as you like, but include how you would like your life to be. For example, you can write, I desire a new computer, or I desire the latest iPhone, or you could include, I desire a vacation in the Caribbean, or I desire a loving partner in my life. You could say, I desire to be president of the United States of America, or I desire to fly on the next SpaceX mission to Mars. Important. Allow your desires to be honest and real for you. And don't censor them. Don't let the ego say, that's impossible. That's ridiculous. You'll never achieve that. Or, who do you think you are? There's only one exception to this process. It's not appropriate to influence another person to your will and your desires. So write all your desires down now and do this before proceeding to the next chapter. Now, this is where you will be familiar with the process that we introduced in the last session. To pause the video now, pause the audio and write out your desires. And when you have that complete, only then resume and come back to this next chapter because the next chapter on how to manifest your desires involves that same procedure where we'll pause and you will write out the answers. How to manifest your desires. You've made it to a most important and critical part of this book on manifesting. Now that you've made a list of your desires and written out how you would like your life to be, answer the questions that follow. What do I think has to happen before my life can change? What do I think has to happen? before my life can change. How long do I think it will be before my desires are fulfilled? How long do I think it will be before my desires are fulfilled? Do I think I can manifest my desires by just thinking about it? Do I think I can manifest my desires by just deciding about it?
what do I believe limits my life? What do I believe limits my life? Do I believe things can only come into manifestation by hard work and time? Do I believe things can only come into manifestation by hard work and time? Do I believe the concept of no pain, no gain is valid? Do I believe the concept of no pain, no gain is valid? Can I accept that because I declare something to be, it will be? Can I accept that because I declare something to be, it will be? Can I let go of the belief that I can't do this or have this because dot 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 I don't have the money, I don't see how I'll get the money, my lover, my wife, husband, family won't allow it, it goes against my religion, I don't have the education, I don't have the degree, I don't have the courage or the confidence, I'm too old, etc, etc, etc. So the question is that you should answer is, can I let go of the belief that I can't do this or have this because dot dot dot. Can I let go of the belief that I can't do this or have this because dot dot dot. Answering these questions will help you see where you may delay the manifestation of your desires by previously held and false beliefs that it takes time, that effort and consistent action is required, or what you desire is impossible to achieve, or that it takes money you don't have. The more you unravel the belief structures that limit you, the faster your new manifestations will appear. You will get to the point where you can simply close your eyes and picture the outcome of your desires and declare it to be. You will find you are making alterations to your reality moment by moment and you'll begin to experiment with greater and greater accomplishments. Each time 
you will more easily recognize your limiting perceptions. And when this happens, you can immediately make new choices and change things in the moment. Now that brings us to the end of that chapter. And now we're going to go into when to take action. In the last chapter, you answered important questions about your desires by writing the answers in your workbook. The reason was to show you how your honest answers can start to allow the universe to manifest your desires. In this chapter, you will learn what to expect as you go through the process of change. You will see, once you're able to leave the how up to the universe, that it will be your job to look for evidence that the universe has received your request and is working on fulfilling your desires. Here are ways that this can show up. One, a positive shift in emotions. Two, sudden depression or anxiety. Three, new opportunities just showing up. Four, old ways or relationships or ideas falling away. Five, stuckness dissolving. Six, excitement and increased energy. Seven, feeling a sense of freedom or power. Eight, increased awareness and happiness. And there's lots more, but these are just pointers to get you on the right road. So let's look more deeply into some of these examples that show you that the universe has heard you and change has begun. One, you may have a shift in attitude or emotions, and this shift will be positive, uplifting and exciting. It'll feel like something wonderful is about to happen. For some people, a positive shift in attitude or emotion can be met with resistance if they're used to having a negative, pessimistic or lethargic view of their future. This is when the old paradigm or comfort zone begins to wreak havoc with your new shift in attitude. With any new change, you need to integrate it into your life by being willing to go with the flow and open up and accept the new thoughts, feelings or motivations that come to the surface. This phase can be one of the hardest to go through, especially if you've spent years in limiting old patterns and ways of life. Now let's look at number two. The second way you'll know something is happening is you may go through a brief period of depression. This is because the old paradigm is leaving you and the new paradigm hasn't quite replaced it yet. This is an in-between place that can feel disorienting. You may have a mixture of depressing feelings as well as periods of elation. You may feel disoriented about what's actually happening. And when this occurs, it's easy to think that your desires are not manifesting or that your new paradigm will not be realized. Nothing could be further from the truth. Whenever something within us leaves or dies, it's natural to feel grief. This is true, even if what you are leaving behind no longer serves you. It has still been a part of your identity, perhaps for years. If this feeling of depression should happen to you, don't give up energizing your manifestations. In fact, this is precisely the time to put more focus and energy on your new scripts. Read and reread them and even add new ones and new positive statements. Trust that the universe has heard you and is working on manifesting your desires. Three, people or opportunities will suddenly show up in your reality that point to the fulfillment of your desires. New connections, open doors, unexpected phone calls, endings, something in the mail or in your inbox, or inner promptings that guide you to go to a certain place or buy a certain book. All of these are evidence your inner guidance is on board and working in your favour. This is when you need to act upon these opportunities and prompts. This is when it is time for you to respond and go forward. If you just sit home and ignore this evidence, most likely your desires will not manifest 
or will be delayed until the universe presents you with another opportunity. 4. It is most likely that for your new life to come into being, you may need to let go of your old ways. This could include jobs, relationships, dietary changes, changes of location, etc. You may find yourself afraid of these changes because they may involve conflict, unknown futures, insecurities and fears. They may involve upsetting the apple cart or hurting another person. These are critical times when you will consider abandoning your desires and sacrificing them in order not to cause conflict or upheaval in your life or in the lives of those around you. You may not want to go through any fear that surfaces in the in-between stages of your manifestations. You may feel as if you are taking a risk with no assurance of a positive or better outcome. This can be a challenging decision time and a weighing of options. You may find yourself re-evaluating how important your new desires are to you and whether you'll go forward with them or not. Remember, you can change any situation around so that it serves you and others that you care about. For example, let's say the worst case scenario is that you need to let go of a relationship that doesn't serve you. You expect that your partner will not take the news of a breakup favorably. What do you do? You can put your focus on the blessing of your partner with the desire that the right person will soon come into their lives to replace you and be much better for them. You can use this process to replace a job or a career where you feel your boss may be left in the lurch. You can make the intention that the person who would love your job and be excellent at it will suddenly show up. I give an example of this in the chapter on new script practices, where within two days, three different people showed up for my position, even though I hadn't yet quit my job. Number five, of course, the reverse can also happen in your life. Suddenly, things that weren't working now work. Relationships get better, job promotions occur, finances pick up. These things could also happen and very often do. The sky is the limit when you consciously manifest. So from now on, if you feel any resistance about what you're doing in this process, simply take out your notebook and write about it. Soon I will show you how to rewrite those doubts and negativities and turn them into positive outcomes. In the meantime, write them down because when you get to the part on rewriting your life script, you will know how to reinforce your new desires by focusing on your new statements and definitions about your new life. In other words, you will know how to add extra energy by directing and focusing your attention to the new paradigm that you are creating. But first, in the following chapter, I share some thoughts on how the symbolism in your everyday life can be a guide to manifesting the correct desires for your highest and best outcome. And that chapter is called Symbolism in Your Everyday Life. And we will leave that until the next session because it is a few pages long, but it tells some great stories and actual experiences that Angel Rose and I have had and others indeed of how symbolism can work in your life to reassure you that your manifestations are indeed working. So that brings us to the end of this session. I want to wish you blessings and love on all your manifestations and we look forward to seeing you in the next session. Bye bye. You have been listening to Angel Rose and Ahanu on World of Empowerment Radio, your station for practical spirituality in a changing world.